There's an old abandoned warehouse in the city. People say it's a haunted place. Everyone is too afraid to go there. But one day, three boys and two girls decide to visit the building and paint graffiti on its walls. They approach the warehouse, but one girl, Rachel, refuses to come inside. She wants to wait for her friends outside. The rest of the group goes into the house. They're already gone for a few minutes. Rachel is about to call them, but at this moment, all three boys and one girl come out of the house. Rachel realizes that ghosts live in the warehouse and runs away. How did she know that? Four people entered the building and four people came out. Where's the catch? One of the boys is different. It's not their friend. Besides, look at his legs. They're slightly transparent. Rachel immediately noticed this and ran away. Kenny is walking through an old abandoned hospital. There are portraits of doctors and some patients on the walls. Kenny illuminates his way with a flashlight. He goes down to the first floor and sees several people in white lab coats. They seem pretty normal and friendly. They're not the guys Kenny saw on the portraits, but he still realizes these doctors are ghosts. How did he figure it out? He was using a flashlight. When he pointed the beam at those people, they didn't cast shadows. It means they were not real. It's evening. Courtney leaves her house to go for a walk to the lake. The moon is shining. The water is calm. There's no wind. Courtney enjoys the silence and the chirping of crickets. She sits down on the grass, closes her eyes, and begins to meditate. At this moment, several people come out of the water. They sit next to Courtney, but she doesn't panic. She realizes she dozed off while meditating and sees a dream now. How did she know that? This time, trust your ears, not your eyes. Firstly, the sound of crickets disappeared. Also, there was no splashing heard when those people came out of the water. The prince of an unknown country arranged a huge party in his homeland. He invited all his friends and lots of celebrities, actors, musicians, and so on. And here he is, on the stage. He takes the microphone and thanks everyone for coming. But he sees only a few people in the hall. Yet he invited many more people. There are simple workers and rich people among his friends. They all live in different countries all over the world. Why haven't any of them arrived? The party is in an unknown country, remember? How could guests buy airplane tickets to an unknown place? Hey, I got a point there! Someone stole a collection of vinyl records from a rock star's house. To escape, the robber hid the records in a trash container. Then he disappeared into a dark alley. Fortunately, Detective Richardson caught him, along with two other suspects. Take a look at them. Who do you think the thief is? Look at this guy's shoes. An old banana peel has stuck to his sneaker. That's because he's been to the trash container. Oliver was attacked in his flat and taken to the hospital. There are four suspects, all of them Oliver's neighbors. Wow, I'd find another apartment. Amelia said she'd been walking in the park since early morning. Henry explained he'd been painting in his studio and had heard nothing. Jacob said he had been repairing his car. Sophia answered she'd been taking a bath for the past three hours. Look at these people's hands and try to figure out who's lying. It's a bit strange that Jacob, who was repairing his car, and Henry, who was painting, both have such clean hands. But they could be wearing gloves. On the other hand, Sophia's hands and fingers don't have wrinkles. But it would be a natural skin reaction after three hours in a bathtub. Sophia, you've been caught red, I mean, smooth-handed. The police found out there was a new smuggler in town. Three people were under suspicion. Luna, a school bus driver, 
Jackson, a fire truck driver, and Daniel, an ambulance driver. All of them claim to have been busy with their work since the very morning. Can you figure out who's the smuggler? Look at the car Daniel drives. On such vehicles, the word ambulance is normally written backward. It's done so that other drivers can instantly read the inverted word in their rearview mirrors. Well, it seems Daniel has given himself away. It was the day when Jacob was supposed to be discharged from the hospital. He had spent a couple of months there and underwent several surgeries. His doctor told him he was going to be fine. It was safe for Jacob to leave the hospital. But the guy didn't believe these promises. In low spirits, he walked home. On the way, he accidentally bumps into an elderly lady. She gets furious and started to shout at Jacob. But instead of arguing back, he hugged the woman and ran home. Why? Jacob had hearing loss. He didn't believe his problem could be helped. But when he heard the woman shouting at him, he realized the doctor had told him the truth. Maybe the doctor should have shouted. Mm-hmm. Chloe stayed late at the office that day. When she was driving home, the woman was worn out. At one moment, she even started to doze off. That's when it happened. She spun off the road and crashed through the fence that was on her way. She couldn't control the car anymore. It slipped down a steep hill and ended up in a lake. Chloe couldn't move her arms. They were stuck. She couldn't undo her seatbelt or open the door. The car sank to the bottom of the lake. Was Chloe doomed? Rescuers arrived three hours later. The woman was still in the car, but she was alive. How did she survive? After the car hit the bottom of the lake, the water only came up to Chloe's throat. It was a very shallow lake. Good thing, huh? It was Jack's birthday, and the fellow got a present he had been dreaming about for ages. A motorbike. The next morning, he rode his bike to college and left it at the parking lot. During lunchtime, Jack decided to check on his motorbike. Imagine his horror when he found out someone had broken the mirrors. The security guard told Jack only three other people had left his building in the afternoon. They were Owen and Sam, two best friends, and Layla, the girl who once liked Jack but got turned down by him. Owen said he and Sam had gone to the campus cafe to get sandwiches for lunch. Sam confirmed this. He then added the bike could have been damaged by Layla out of revenge. But Layla told Jack her mother had visited her and they had spent two hours together. So, who's lying? Owen has a paper bag with food delivery written on it. It means the guys ordered their lunch, not bought it in the cafe. They broke Jack's mirrors and tried to frame Layla. Not a good reflection on them, huh? Detective Taylor was chasing a dangerous criminal. Suddenly, the man entered a hospital. Oh no, there are hundreds of rooms there. Luckily, it was raining, and the criminal left footprints on the hospital floor. The detective followed them and got into a small room. There were three people there, all covered in bandages from head to toe. But one of them was a fake patient. Who? It was the dude in the middle. He didn't even have a medical chart next to his bed. Very quick job on the bandages, though. The CEO of a large company called the police. He was sure that one of his employees, Victoria, had stolen a memory card with secret information. She was going to sell it to their competitors. The police arrived at Victoria's house, but the woman didn't let them in without a warrant. The officers had to leave to get all the necessary papers. By the time they were back, Victoria had already been sitting in her car, ready to drive off. The police officers arrested the woman. They searched her car and clothes, but found nothing. 
And then, when they were about to give up, one of the detectives realized where Victoria kept the memory card. Can you figure it out? When the police first came to her, the woman had her hair down. But after that, Victoria changed her hairstyle. The memory card is in her bun. Yep, Victoria and her sticky bun. (laughs) Michael was going home from the gym when everything went black. When he regained consciousness, he found out he was in a locked room. Next to the door, there was a computer with a keyboard. On the screen, there was a riddle. Michael had to write the correct answer and the door would open. The riddle went like this. It makes two people out of one. What is it? Michael typed the needed word and the door opened. He was free to go. What was the answer? It's a mirror. Oh, I was guessing a buzzsaw, but this one is better and not as messy. You suddenly wake up trapped in a dark room. Your only source of light is a candle. There are two doors in front of you. Behind one of them, there's a tunnel that will lead you outside to freedom. Behind the other, just a cold brick wall. You have a key that will open only one of the doors, and you can try it just once. So how do you know which door to try? Hold the candle up to each keyhole. The flame will move near the door that leads outside. You escape to freedom, but you need to send some important documents to your friend Beth. You can't mail them in a regular package because the precious papers will get stolen. So you put them in a box and lock it. But Beth doesn't have the key to this lock. How can you send the papers if you can't send the key to the lock separately? First, send the lock box to Beth. She'll attach her own lock and send the box back to you. Then remove your own lock and send the package again. Beth can then remove her lock and finally open the package. Bad news! You get a call one morning from Beth. She says the crucial documents were stolen from her office. They'd been on the desk the evening before, but are nowhere to be found this morning. You immediately go there to question the employees. In no time, you gather three suspects. Sean said he had been at the movies last night. Michael had taken his girlfriend to an amusement park. And Christina was at a prestigious art gallery. Who's lying? Sean. His movie ticket isn't torn. Having been caught red-handed, Sean makes a break for it. He hops in his car and drives away. Law enforcement are on the lookout. Sean sees a police car right ahead of him and starts driving toward it. Why would he do that? He was on a bridge. He needed to go toward the patrol car to get to the other side and make his escape. No such luck for poor Sean. He gets caught and locked up. But he starts hearing rumors of an inmate planning to break out. The guards have two suspects. First, a quiet bookworm who spends most of his days with his nose buried in sci-fi novels. The second, a big burly tattooed guy who's always working out. Who should Sean become friends with if he wants to get out of here? The bookworm. Look closer, and you'll see his bookmark is actually a file. On Friday afternoon, the owner of that same prestigious art gallery discovered that four of the most famous artist self-portraits had been stolen during an exhibition. The police show up to do an investigation, and now they have three suspects. Sarah, the artist, said she disappeared into one of the studios to paint. 
John, the security guard, explained he was just waiting outside and had no idea the portraits were gone. Daniel, the caterer, stated he was at a nearby store picking up extra napkins when the robbery took place. So, who's the thief? It's the security guard. He couldn't have known the stolen paintings were portraits if he was standing outside. As fate would have it, there was another incident that night. Michael, who never really liked what passed for art in modern times, rushed into the gallery and caused millions of dollars worth of damage to several paintings. Yet the gallery's owner thanked him for his actions. How come? Michael is a firefighter. The water from his hose damaged several masterpieces, but he still managed to extinguish the fire and save many more works. They awarded Michael a big check in gratitude. He heads home just in time to get his five kids all packed up for a camping trip that weekend. Mike and his wife are really looking forward to having the weekend for themselves to relax. But when they woke up on Saturday, they discovered the check was missing from their safe. Once the officers showed up, they interviewed the three people who were in the house that morning. The chef said he was in the kitchen getting school lunches packed. The cleaner said he finished cleaning quickly that day and left early. The butler had just gotten back after taking the kids to camp three hours away. Who's lying? It's the chef. It's Saturday, so there's no school, and the kids have gone camping. Meanwhile, on the other side of town, a scientist is working on something bizarre. He invites Kevin and Claire as blind test subjects for his new serum invention. He gives them each a glass of ice-cold lemonade. Kevin drinks his fast, but Claire apprehensively waits to see the side effects on him first. After two hours, nothing happens. So she drinks her glass. Two minutes later, her skin turns green. If both the drinks had the serum, why was only Claire affected? The serum was in the ice. Since Kevin drank his fast, none of it got in the lemonade. Claire runs out of the lab in horror. She gets in her car and speeds off. As she's driving down a long, empty road, one of her tires pops off. Good thing she has a spare in the trunk. But here's the problem. She now has no lug nuts to put the spare on with. So what should Claire do? Unscrew one lug nut from each of the other three wheels and use them to attach the spare tire. It'll be enough to get to the nearest garage safely. As Claire is putting on her spare tire, the scientist catches up to her. He hands her four pills and tells her it's a complex cure to the green face serum. Two of the pills are an antidote, and the other two are a catalyst that activates it. Claire must take one of each type together. If she takes two of the same, her face will stay green forever. Just as the scientist is handing her the pills, he trips and they get all mixed up. They look identical. What should Claire do? Grind the tablets up, mix all the powder together, and divide it in two parts. Each half will have the same amount of catalyst and antidote. So Bill had stomach cramps and went to the hospital where he was prescribed some pills. The next morning, he was found unconscious. Police found someone had switched the pills and questioned three suspects. Dr. Johnson, his cardiologist, saw him at 3 in the afternoon and wrote the prescription. John, the hospital cleaner, came to clean the room at 7 a.m., found him, and called the police. Susan, his nurse, brought the pills to him at 8 that morning. Who's lying? Susan, 
The cleaner called the police one hour before she claimed to have brought in the pills. Mia got a new cat and brought it into her apartment where she lived with three other people. But all her roommates disliked her new pet. Three months later, she went on a two-day business trip, but when she came back, the cat was gone. She questioned all her roommates. Steve didn't notice the cat was missing. David said he was allergic to cats and couldn't survive a day with one around him. Sean was the one taking care of the cat, and he was shocked he couldn't find it that morning. Who's lying? David. If he was allergic to cats, he wouldn't have lasted with Mia's cat in the same house for several months before. You went to visit an abandoned castle when you got trapped in the basement. There's a small bamboo stick on the table, almost as long as your forearm. In front of you, there are three doors, and you must spend one hour behind one of them to get out of the castle. Which is the safest option? Behind the first door, there's 100 rabid wild rats. Behind the second, there's a box filled with water, and you must keep your head submerged in it. In the third door, there's an infinitely deep pool filled with box jellyfish. The second door. You can use the bamboo stick to breathe. Brian was traveling by train to a nearby city. He placed his watch on the table and was looking for his train ticket when the train went into a dark tunnel. When it came out, Brian's watch was gone. There were only three people in the car. Mary was sleeping the entire time. Christopher was looking for his wallet to grab a cup of coffee. Mike was playing a game on his phone. Who took the watch? It was Mary. When the journey started, she had her sleeves rolled up, and if she were sleeping, she wouldn't put them down. Sarah was walking out of the mall when someone snatched the purse out of her hand and drove off in a red car. The security closed the parking lot and found three people with red cars. Alyssa said she was inside shopping when she got called by security. David said he had only just arrived. Bob said he was about to pay his parking fee and drive off. Who isn't telling the truth? David. He's got a parking ticket on his window. From the sign on the wall, he's been there for more than two hours without paying and got a ticket. And he lies about being very allergic to cats. Simon (laughs) broke into the richest house in the neighborhood and took a very expensive diamond. Security guards caught him walking out and searched him for the diamond. They knew he'd taken it, so when they couldn't find anything, they x-rayed him. Still, nothing showed up. Where was Simon carrying the diamond? As soon as the guards caught him, he put it in one of their pockets. After the search was over and they were driving him home, he took it out of their pocket with nobody noticing. A crazy scientist took you into their basement and is planning to keep you there for a year. He's given you the option to choose one of three foods to eat for the year to stay alive. Which one do you choose to save your life? Pasta and bread, rice and beans, steak and broccoli. If you only ate pasta and bread, you'd get scurvy in just 8 months. And steak with broccoli is low in carbs, which will start breaking down your muscle mass to help you stay alive. Your best bet is rice and beans. It's high in all 9 essential amino acids your body needs, and you can germinate some of the raw beans eating their sprouts to get your vitamin C. Aren't you a smart cookie? A year passes and you've managed to get out of the basement. But to make it out of the house, you must pick one of the three doors the scientist created. The first room is filled with venomous cone snails. The second has five very hungry polar bears. The third is a saltwater tank with hundreds of piranhas. Which is the safest?
The third room. Piranhas are freshwater fish and can't survive in salt water. Three prisoners are sitting at the table having dinner. But one of them is wealthy. Can you guess who it is? It's not the guy with the steak and the shrimps. The little tag on his shirt reveals he's a chef, and he likes to prepare a special treat for himself. The guy with the jewels shows that he's rich, but in prison, jewelry is basically worthless. It's the third guy. Rich people try to keep low profile in prison, not to be targeted by others. That's why he doesn't flash any valuable possessions or his status. A group of researchers is trying to test your knowledge. They take you into their lab on an island in Italy and present three dishes to you, but only one is safe to eat. Which do you choose? Cheese infested by maggots? Boiled pufferfish liver? Or fly agaric mushrooms? Pufferfish liver can be poisonous if it isn't prepared properly. And the fly agaric mushrooms are among the most dangerous in the world. Maggot cheese, on the other hand, is actually a delicacy in Sardinia, Italy. So it's perfectly safe to eat. Really? One day, you wake up in an arena without knowing how you got there. From the speakers, you hear that you must fight one of three hybrid animals. Which one do you pick to stay alive? A polar bear with the head of a rattlesnake, a hippo with a lion head, or a hybrid with the face and body of a great white shark and the limbs of a jaguar. The great white shark hybrid. Since its body has gills, it won't be able to breathe outside water. So Rick wants to become a famous chef, but the cooking school only accepts applicants over 18. Rick's brother Jeff is twice older than Rick. Rick's sister Ruth is twice younger than Jeff. She turned 18 this year. So, Sherlock, can Rick apply for his dream school this year? Yep, he's 18 years old. Rick and Ruth are of the same age because they're twins. Rick has prepared all papers for the cooking school, but he still needs to get some work experience and recommendations to get accepted. He found three job ads. Bill has a small diner on the fourth floor of the local shopping mall. He needs help in the kitchen. Holly offers a part-time internship at her fancy sushi restaurant. But first, you need to pay $300 for a two-week training. Sam needs an assistant in his noodle shop. Now, only one of these offers isn't fake. Can you tell which one? Hmm, there's no fourth floor in this shopping mall. Holly's picture is hanging on the window of the restaurant, and it says scammer. So Rick should choose Sam. Sam liked Rick's skills and CV, but he wanted to test his intelligence before hiring him. That's why he gave Rick this list of ingredients and asked him to bring them from the pantry of the cafe. Unfortunately, Sam coded this list. Can you help Rick find all the products? Here's the first ingredient. I always try to catch up with my buddy Mustard. What am I? Have you guessed? It's ketchup. Here's the next one. My closest friend is peanut butter. What am I? The second ingredient is jelly. I'm a nut that is only delicious when fried or baked. What am I? Have you guessed? It's a donut. I am a bird, I am a fruit, and I am a person at the same time. What am I? A kiwi. I go along with most veggies and snacks beside me. What am I? I 
I'm a dip. <laughs> it's nothing personal. I'm a cup that doesn't hold any water. What am I? I'm talking about a cupcake here. A little pool with two layers of water around it. One is white and soft, and the other is dark and hard amidst a light brown grassy lawn with an outline of green grass. What's that all about? It's a coconut. It's hard to get a smooth bite, and you can chew me for a long time if I'm too dry. What am I? And the correct answer is jerky. I'm a green veggie that looks like a tiny tree. What am I? Can you guess? I'm broccoli. A time when they're green, a time when they're brown. But both of these times cause me to frown. But just in between, for a very short while, they're perfect in yellow and cause me to smile. What are they? Well, I'm sure you've guessed it's all about grapes. People confuse me with a vegetable, but I'm actually a fruit. I'm red when I'm ripe, and I'm sliced and served on burgers. What am I? A tomato or tomato? I'm the type of room you cannot enter or leave. I raise from the ground below. I can be poisonous or a delicious treat. What am I? Can you guess? All of this is about a mushroom. You throw away my outside and you cook my inside. Then you eat me from the outside and throw away what's inside. What am I? The correct answer is corn. I'm the kind of food that mummies like to eat. What am I? It's a wrap. Oh, really? Time for the final ingredient. I wear a red coat and have a stone inside my throat. Who am I? I'm a cherry. Hey, great job. Rick has brought all the ingredients. Sam hired him right away and asked him to take orders. Rick saw three customers in the cafe, but only one of them was a real human. Can you spot who exactly it was? This woman has gills just like a fish. She's a mermaid. And this guy's wearing trousers instead of a shirt, and he's trying to pay with shells. It's pretty clear he's not from this planet. Someone had stolen a tip box from Sam's Cafe. The police arrived almost at once. Rick said that he could only see the back of the robber. He knew it was a woman. The next day, another robbery took place. But this time, the guard managed to block the exit. The police arrived in a minute. They saw four women in the cafe. Can you tell who the thief was? It was Pam. She's the only one whose shoes are good enough for running. The police nearly arrested Pam, but she managed to escape. Rick ran after her and noticed she snuck into a school. Rick followed her. He noticed Pam's hoodie by one of the doors, so he entered the classroom. Rick faced four ladies who looked like Pam. Can you help him find the real Pam? There she is. She has neither books nor pens on her desk. 
Jerry is walking through the woods. He's cold, hungry, and lost. The guy takes a few steps and stops because he hears something. He goes toward the source of the sound and finds a large clearing. There are three houses. Which one should Jerry enter? The house on the left is closed from the outside. There's a lock on the door, see? The house on the right seems safe. But look at these footprints leading to the door. These are wolf paw prints. Jerry should choose the house in the middle. A wanderer has been walking through the desert for several hours. He doesn't have any water left, and he's losing strength. He climbs a low hill and sees three lakes. They're far from one another, and only one of them is real. Help the wanderer distinguish the reality from a mirage. There are palm trees near all the lakes, but only one of them reflects the trees. It means that the lake on the right is real. You're walking along the beach. Suddenly, you hear a scream. A woman is calling for help. She's drowning. You run into the water and swim towards her. As soon as you approach her, you see three more people. They're all screaming, but only one of them needs help. The rest are mer people who want to take you to their kingdom. How can you find out which one is human? Dive under the water to see who has a fish tail. Richard likes abandoned buildings and old castles. Today, he's going to check a huge house that belonged to a vampire a long time ago. Well, that's what the legends say. Richard certainly doesn't believe this. He takes his camera and sets off. It's dark and cold inside the house. Crackling sounds are coming from the corridor. Richard shines a flashlight and sees three vampires. Richard starts running away, but then he stops and returns. It seems these vampires are fake. How did the guy understand this? There's a mirror on the ceiling above the first vampire, and he gets reflected there. The second vampire has no fangs. And the third one, uh-oh, he seems to be real. Run! Now Richard wants to visit an abandoned hospital. There are rumors that werewolves live there. Richard is sure it's a myth. He's walking around dark hospital wards all night, but finds nothing. He's about to leave, but four men block the exit. They are howling and growling. Which of them is the real werewolf? No one. The full moon is shining through the windows, but these people haven't turned into monsters. But still, Richard runs away. It seems these guys are really crazy. A rich man comes to an exhibition of modern art. He's going to buy a new painting for his collection. The owner of the exhibition shows him three works of different artists. In the first picture, there's a green triangle with a sunflower in the middle. The second painting is of a tiger taking a selfie on his phone. In the third picture, there's a flying house. The collector is sure that one of the paintings is fake. Which one? Each canvas has the artist's signature and the date when it was created. The painting with the tiger is dated 1957. There were no mobile phones and selfies at that time. This picture is fake. Martin's nervous because today is his first DJ performance at an electronic music festival. He goes on the stage. The crowd is cheering. Martin puts on his headphones and turns on the first track. Music is playing, but people aren't dancing. Why? The music is only playing in the DJ's headphones. Martin hasn't connected the wire to the speaker, see? People are sitting in their seats. The lights turn off. Someone is chewing popcorn. Someone else is drinking soda. The movie starts. This is a horror. Someone screams. The ticket taker enters the hall. Several people haven't paid for their tickets. Guess who? No one has a ticket here. Free entrance, the note pinned to the back door claims. 
Jack is walking through an ancient abandoned city in the desert. Treasure is hidden somewhere here. Jack checks the map and finds the right place. He starts digging. Six hours later, exhausted, he hits something with a shovel. It's a chest. Jack pulls it out of the ground, rips off the rusty lock, and opens it. The chest is filled with ancient gold coins. Each of them costs hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now, Jack is incredibly rich. But he shouldn't be happy because all the coins are fake. Why is that? Each coin has a date, 145 BCE. It seems they're really old. But people who lived at that time couldn't write BCE on their coins because they didn't know they lived before the current era. Katie and John went on vacation together to an exotic location. In their first week, they booked a tour to the desert. But during the tour, the couple got lost. They were really thirsty, so they decided to go look for some water. Soon enough, the couple came across a huge oasis. But to reach the main waterfall where they could drink some water, they had to cross a bridge. But there were three bridges leading to the same place. The first bridge was high above the ground, and the ropes holding it looked as if they could rip at any second. The second bridge had some hungry-looking alligators crawling all over it. And the last bridge stretched over a lake full of poisonous water plants. <laughs> Which bridge should they choose? The last one. The bridge stands high above the lake. Katie and Jake won't have to touch the water and the plants when crossing it. Luckily, they had radios with them, so they sent an SOS signal to their guide. The guide told them to sit tight. He promised the guys that a rescue team would be shortly on its way to help them. In a few hours, three rescue teams reached Katie and John. The guys got suspicious mm -hmm. and asked the members of the team who had sent them. The first team said that they'd heard on the radio that a couple had gotten lost in the desert and had come to help them. The members of the second team explained that the hotel the guys were staying at had called the police for help. The last team said they'd received a radio signal saying the couple had been in distress. They immediately came to the rescue. Which team should the couple trust? The last team. John and Katie sent a message to their guide as soon as they got lost, remember? Back in the hotel room, John and Katie found out that someone had broken into their safe. The couple called the police and told the inspector that a few hundred dollars and an expensive watch had been stolen from the safe. In less than a day, the inspector had three suspects. The first suspect was Bella, their tour guide. Bella said she'd been really worried about the couple's disappearance and hadn't left her room. The second suspect was Claudio, the hotel manager. He told the inspector that he hadn't even known that the couple had been missing. He was sure they'd been staying in their room this whole time. The last suspect was Bob from the rescue team. He told the inspector it wasn't him. It was the first time he had set foot in the hotel. Who is lying? Claudio, look at his wrist. He's wearing a very expensive watch that looks exactly like the watch that was stolen. Plus, look at his pocket. He didn't do a good job at hiding the stash of money he'd stolen. After the crime was solved, John and Katie decided it was time to head home. As soon as they arrived at their house, they tried to open the new suitcase they had bought during the trip. They tried several number combinations but couldn't figure out the code. Luckily, Katie remembered she had saved a note on her cell phone. This was the tip she wrote down. 682. One digit is right and in its place. 614. One digit is right but in the wrong place. 206. Two digits are right but both are in the wrong place. 768. All digits are wrong. 380. One digit is right but in the wrong place. Can you figure out what the three-digit code to open their suitcase is? Zero, four, two. The following weekend, Katie's friends invited her to a picnic in the forest. But when she arrived at the agreed place, she didn't see any of her girlfriends. Instead, 
she saw a large group of people standing in a wide clearing. Apparently, she had come to the wrong location, but right before she left, she noticed that three of these people weren't human. Can you spot them? Look at the way that girl over there blinks. This doesn't look normal, does it? And look at that granny's cane. It's part of her body, not a separate object. And that guy is charging his phone using a cable connected to his leg. Yikes! On a rainy Saturday night, John and Katie decided to stay in, order pizza, and watch the Riddle Channel on TV. On the screen, there were two women. The first one was stuck inside a cage hanging above the ocean, filled with sharks. The other woman was tied with a rope hanging over a lake with piranhas. Both ropes were about to break. Who has the best chance of surviving? It's lady number two. The first lady is stuck inside a cage, so she has no way to escape. If she falls into the water, she will most likely not survive. But lady number two has both her hands free, so she can try to climb the rope before it tears. The next morning, John went to work. As soon as he arrived at the office, he saw that his colleague Susan was very upset. She said that at one point, she had gone to the bathroom. But when she came back, she discovered that someone had stolen her pearl earring she had kept inside her drawer. John promptly mm. undertook an investigation. The first suspect was Gertrude, a saleswoman. She said she was in a meeting with the CEO and nowhere near Susan's famous pearl earrings. The second suspect was Britt, an IT guy. He said he'd been fixing the company's software all morning. And lastly, John questioned Brian, the CEO, who said he had spent the morning at his daughter's ballet recital. Can you tell who's lying? It was Gertrude. Gertrude's account contradicts the CEO's statement. And plus, look at those pearl earrings she has in her desk drawer. They look somewhat familiar, no? John went back to his desk and started working. Later that evening, a massive power outage made all the lights in the building go out. John heard footsteps approaching him. The next thing he knew, he felt dizzy. He passed out and woke up in a tiny room with a metal door. John tried to open the door, but it was locked. He noticed that next to the door, there was a little device with a red sign that asked for a password. Below the device, there was a piece of paper with the following hint. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. John read the note aloud mm -hmm. several times before he finally figured out what the password was. Can you guess what password he typed? He typed in one time the number two, three times the number four, five times the number six, and seven times the number eight. Phew, that wasn't very obvious, was it? One afternoon, John was walking down the street when he came across a dog. The dog had a collar with its name on it, and a part of its leash was still attached to the collar. It looked like the dog had just run away, so John picked it up and started searching for its owner. He walked into a pet store, and there were three people standing near the counter. John took a quick look around and knew immediately who the owner was. How did he figure it out? Look at the guy in the middle. A ripped leash is hanging out of his pocket. He must be the dog's owner. On a beautiful morning, Katie and her friend went on a hike. At some point, they saw a river they needed to cross. Both of them needed to get to the other side. However, the boat could only make one trip back and forth and take one of them at a time. Still, both of them managed to get across the river. How? That's easy. They both went on a hike on the same day but they weren't together, so they arrived at the river at the same time. But they were on the opposite banks, and after Katie arrived at the other side of the river, her friend managed to get to the opposite bank too.